a quick update here. Um, and I've just done another mod to this. This is the following day, actually. Um, and I don't think you noticed my video went up yesterday. I think it was for the hardware SID implementation. And uh, Dave Karan actually pointed out something that I'd, I'd previously thought about. Um, and that was the... Um, he you know, echoed something I previously thought about. And that was the fact that Potex and Pot Y, as you've previously seen here, um, are an issue. When the, the SID is being read, um, you get a problem. Now that's because both SIDs are trying to write to the data bus at the same time. In, in that case, that particular case, they're both looking at the Potex Pot Y values, but there are other registers that can be read as well. Um, so really, uh, this is the thing Dave pointed out. He's very good at spotting these things, and he spotted it straight away. As soon as the, he saw the post, that was his first question. His first question is, uh, you know, what about when uh, SID 2 has been read, aren't you going to get a conflict there on the bus where both chips are effectively trying to drive the data bus? And yeah, he's actually absolutely correct there. And I had thought about this, but I hadn't not really, I thought maybe I could just get away with it. But on retrospect, in retrospect, uh, and certainly uh, f following on from Dave's post there, um, I thought I'd better deal with this really. And I started looking at it last night and there was a bit of some messages going back and forwards between myself and Dave. And he suggested actually the simplest way you can implement this is with an OR gate. Um, I don't know why, I seemed to get it in my head that I needed an XOR gate, um, but actually after rereading Dave's post this afternoon, his final message, it's pretty clear to me that an OR gate should just do the job. Um, now the alternative that he suggested was just using a couple of diodes here, so the way this is working, um, these two pins here are the read write and the chip select on SID1. And you've got two diodes there, just encapsulated with this heat shrink tube, and just to stop them from shorting on these legs here. Um, so your anode of each diode is on, is on this side, on the SID one side, and then the cathodes of these diodes both join together and go to the chip select pin of the second SID, and the actual the normal chip select is not connected. So basically, what that means is when chip select is low on SID one, then you'll get a low on SID two, so it should be enabled. And when you get um, low on the read write pin on um, which means write mode SID 2 is also in write mode now when SID 1 goes into write mode the read write pin is going to go uh, sorry read mode when it, it's going to go high the read write pin will go high when it's trying to read from SID 1 now when that goes high obviously that goes across the diode here and it's into the chip select which disables the uh, second SID as soon as the chip select goes high it disables it uh, hence why we're using these two diodes that way with the read write pin and the chip select pin um, so the other thing here, and this was the missing final step, I did try this earlier today and I couldn't get it to work. And I did mention to Dave that uh, it didn't seem to be working, but having revisited this now, I thought I'm going to try a lower size resistor there. Um, I think I had something like a, three, a 4K7 or something previously and it was really glitchy. But with a 1K uh, resistor from ground to the, where the, you know, the chip select effectively, and you need that because if you think about it, when, these, when, when you've got a low being driven on the chip select or the read write pin, because of the diodes here, you're going to get nothing. This pin's going to be almost like um, it's floating, kind of thing, high impedance. So you need to pull it, you know, low with something. Um, but the size of that resistor might not be optimal. I'd be appreciate if anybody out there's got any suggestions. Is 1K too low? Is it too high for something like this? Bear in mind that the logic level is somewhat like three and a half volts, roughly. So I think I measured it actually as this is working now. It drops to about 2.9 or 2. Point, uh, something like that. You know, it's obviously the 0.7 volt drop from the diode C and that's effectively what you get in so I guess I'm not going to get any better than you know than that so it should be all right but maybe current wise maybe 1k is not a good thing I don't know I mean I'm not too worried because the thing that drives the chip select on that is the 139 so and I did test that it wasn't getting even slightly warm so I guess the worst case is it could kill the 139 at some point if it's too much stress there um, as it's transitioning from high to low via the diode but I don't know I don't think that's going to be a problem so the bottom line is now that works that's all done um, I'll put a diagram actually on this video just to um, help with that help you understand what I've done there but thanks very much to Dave Karam for being patient with me and uh, and pointing out the idea to start with it kind of like I say I hadn't I'd thought it myself but not thought thought about it as much as he had and it was a case of I initially thought I could just get away with this and actually uh, after him pointing out the specifics you know why why it's a bad problem why why and it is a problem you know some of these SID boards out there if you're doing this you know if you've got a dual SID or you've got a SID to SID board and you've not got that modification there effectively whenever your SID is being um, read one, you know, your SID 1's being read, SID 2's being read, and they're both writing, both driving the data bus at the same time, which is, you know, one could be pulling it high, one could be pulling it low. So ultimately, you could potentially kill both SIDs, they're both going to have lesser life. So this solution, 
um, hopefully you know sorts that out. The other thing I've done there actually while, while I'm here as well before I forget is I removed the gr two ground contacts on the pot X and pot Y on the second SID because that's no longer, should be, no longer red so I'll run the diagnostics car on it again just to make sure that's a good test um, and I'll you know have a go of Last Ninja 3 and see if it skips the uh, intro or not but assuming I don't report back um, it's all good. Anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.